coming to you from my beautiful office in downtown Vancouver. And today, what I wanted to talk about on glutathione authority is raising glutathione. You know, there's a myriad of products appearing on the market right now that claim, make some, some really substantive claims about glutathione activity in the body. So their claims are it raises at 300% or 500%. You can drink electro, hydrolyzed, electrolyzed water and it raises glutathione activity 500%. Or you can take this pill and it raises glutathione activity 300%. Or you can put this patch on your arm and it raises glutathione activity 300%. So I want to talk to you about the difference between raising glutathione and activating glutathione. So I'm going to do a little demo here for you. Uh, we have about 10 grams of glutathione in our body. So there's a little bit, a tiny, tiny little bit of glutathione in every cell, all 70 trillion cells of our body. So he, here is what 10 grams looks like. I don't know if you can see that very well. That's an eight ounce glass. You can see there's a bit of powder down there. I don't know if I can make it any better, but that's about 10 grams. So if you, didn't have any idea of what 10 grams looks like. That's about what it looks like. That is distributed completely throughout your body. When our immune system is acting normally, what is happening is from the glutathione in our body, a little bit, 10% is held inside every cell of our body and then the 90% is outside. So what's happening is our body is taking a little bit of glutathione at a time in every cell and it's using to reduce oxidative stress, attack bacteria, to defend our body. And when our immune system is working normally, it takes it out and then it puts it back. It takes it out and puts it back. That's a normal function immune system. Now we already know that people who are ill, and there's now 98 illnesses at least, where what happens is there's so much demand in your body for glutathione, it's going out and not coming back. So when people say they activate glutathione, so let's t say I take half of this glutathione out of here and I stir it up with a stick and make it look all powdery. I've activated what's in my body and it appears as though I've done something really magical with my glutathione. But all the, pe all the things that do that, nobody has ever given me a study or showed a study that it conclusively proves that they've increased glutathione. So since we have so many illnesses where glutathione levels are decreased, what I like to do is use things that actually build up the store of glutathione in our body. And we can do that. We can do it temporarily through glutathione injection, temporarily through glutathione inhalation, in other words, making this into a liquid and injecting it into our body or um, making it into a, a, another kind of liquid and misting it through our nose, breathing it in. And you think about this, children that are born with particular illnesses, we already know cystic fibrosis, uh, cerebral palsy, all those kinds of things, we already know they didn't get 10 grams of glutathione. There's no, they didn't get as much as they should have got, so they're already at a disadvantage. So raising glutathione levels is really the goal, not just activating glutathione, it's raising glutathione. So how do we do that? Well, Cetria glutathione, clinically proven in human studies to actually raise glutathione. In other words, when some of this has been taken out, it's going to replace a little bit of it back in there. You can use precursor amino acids. This actually is amino acids. And your body is genetically programmed. So imagine if you had, uh, I'm just going to use this because I don't know what else to use. This is, this is a two-prong plug with a hole. Okay, so imagine in your body you have this. This is a, a place where glutam glutamine can click on. This is a place where glycine can click on. And then there's a little place back here, and this is for the cysteine, because remember, glutathione is made of three amino acids. And the two that stick here are in abundance in our body. This one is lacking, and we need this one to activate this and make it into glutathione. So when we have the 
uh, if we add glutathione, clinically proven glutathione, we raise the complete store of glutathione and we make more glutathione available to this big pool of glutathione. When we take precursor amino acids, if they're in the right proportion, and this is so critical because this will only accept something that is exactly geared to this. These bugs might accept a lot of, you know, there's a little variability and we have a lot of glutamine. We have a lot of glycine in our body, but this is very particular. When they're in the right proportion, these will be here, this will stick on, and boof, you have increased your body store of glutathione. So that's the difference. So when somebody says to you, well, we have a product and it activates glutathione 300, 500, whatever kind of percent in the body, first of all, that's a temporary measurement. It's taken maybe an hour or so after they've taken the product. No clinical proof that that is doing work long term. But when we raise glutathione in our body, when we give our body more of what is missing because it's either using it up for stress or for drugs or alcohol or smoking or any a myriad of things that are going in our, on in our body, it's a completely different story. So if you want to adequately um, tr raise, uh, nor optimize your immune system, sorry I was scrambling for the word, optimize your immune system, you need to raise glutathione, not just activate it. So hopefully that made it clear for you. I hope you have a wonderful day wherever you are. And this is Alan Ogden for Glutathione Authority. Have a great day.